Our Earth has spent a time of 4.5 billion years. Our Earth has suffered numerous catastrophes. These numerous catastrophes have imperiled our planet from massive impacts to volcanic conflagrations to glacial episode of snowball earth. Yet life exists among all of the hazards that threaten a planet. The most potentially calamitous might be a nearby star exploding as a supernova. First time astronomers have imaged in real time the dramatic end of a red supergiant life. Astronomers have directed the massive star's rapid self-destruction and final death thrown before it collapsed into type 2 supernova. A lot of people are not aware of this term supernova before knowing whether will the supernova in 2022 affect Earth or not. But we should know. Hey friends, what is supernova? How does a star explode? And how dangerous an explosion can be for our planet? Stay with us. When a massive enough star reaches at the end of its life, the star experiences a much more energetic and violent end. Friends, it means the star explodes as a supernova. A star's life cycle is determined by its mass. The larger its mass, the shorter is its life cycle. A star's mass is determined by the amount of matter that is available in its nebula. Friends, nebula is the giant cloud of gas and dust from which the star was born. Over time, the hydrogen gas in the nebula is pulled together by gravity and it begins to spin. As the gas spins faster, it heats up and becomes as a protostar and the temperature reaches 150 million degrees and nuclear fusion occurs in the cloud's core and the cloud begins to glow brightly, contracts a little and becomes stable. Now it is a main second star and will remain in this stage, signing for millions to billions of years to come. This is the stage our sun is at right now. As the main second star glows, hydrogen in its core is converted into helium by nuclear fusion. When the hydrogen supply in the core begins to run out and the star is no longer generating heat by nuclear fusion, the core becomes unstable and contracts. The outer shell of that star, which is still mostly hydrogen, starts to expand. As it expands, it cools and glow red. And the star has now reached the red giant phase. Friend, it is red because it is cooler than it was in the main sequence star stage. And it is giant because the outer shell has expanded outward. In the core of the red giant, helium fuses into carbon. Friends, you may think our star sun may explode as supernova. All stars evolved the same way up to the red giant phase. But after the return phase of a low mass star like our sun, we'll follow the different revolutionary path. In the return phase for a low mass star, a hydrogen burning cell forms around the helium core, and the cells contribute more and more helium to the core over time. Eventually, the core becomes hotter and denser and reaches a temperature of 100 million Kelvin, and helium nuclei begin to fuse into carbon, and the helium then heats the core rapidly even more. And a helium flash takes place. This causes the core to expand, which lowers the temperature of the core and reduces the total energy output from what it was during the red giant phase. The outer layers then contract and the star's temperature increases a bit. After about 100 million years, the star fuses all its core helium into carbon. Then a helium fusion cell forms around this core and the hydrogen fusion cell remains around that. It then becomes a red giant again and remains like this for a few million years with its outer layers continuing to expand. After that, gravity no longer contains the outer layers of the red giant. The star ejects these layers into space. The remaining carbon core is still very hot. Its temperature is around 1 lakh Kelvin and emits ultraviolet radiation that ionizes the gas in expanding cell and makes it glow brightly. This glowing gas is called a planetary nebula. Hey friends, planetary nebula are relatively common and astronomers estimate that there are between 20,000 and 50,000 in our galaxy. 
friends the cooling core is called a white dwarf and eventually can no longer be seen and is then called a black dwarf the matter in a white dwarf is very dense about about 10 to the power 9 kg per cube meter which is a million times denser than water friends stars that are five times or more massive than our sun reach the red ten phase their core temperature increases as carbon atoms are formed from the fusion of helium atoms gravity continues to pull carbon atoms together as the temperature increases and the additional fusion process proceed forming oxygen nitrogen and eventually iron when the core contains essentially just iron fusion in the core ceases this is because iron is the most compact and stable of all the elements creating heavier elements through fusion of iron thus requires an input of energy rather than the release of energy since energy is no longer been radiated from the core in less than a second the star begins the final phase of gravitational collapse the core temperature rises to over 100 billion degrees as the iron atoms are crushed together the repulsive force between the nuclei overcomes the force of gravity and the core recoils out from the heart of the star in a shockwave which we see as a supernova explosion. But friends why is astronomer called it type 2 supernova? Because when the two stars orbit around a point and the two stars out of which one of the star that is white dwarf tries to pull the matter from the nearby star and when it becomes unstable it explodes. Friends, that white dwarf may also collide with that nearby star and result in supernova. Thus, the type 2 supernovas are formed this way. As the shock encounters material in the star's outer layers, the material is heated, fusing to form new elements and radioactive isotopes. While many of the more common elements are made through the nuclear fusion in the cores of the stars, it takes unstable condition of the supernova explosion to form many of the elements. The shock wave propels this material out into space. The material that is exploded away from the star is now known as a supernova remnant. The hot material, the radioactive isotopes as well as the leftover of the exploded star produce X-rays and gamma rays. Hey friends, how dangerous these rays are for our planet. A nearby exploding star may affect our Earth. It already happened about 2.6 million years ago. A new light appeared in the sky. Our ancestors might be noticed that. The light was point-like and brighter than the full moon, but it quickly fades from view during the daytime. It remains brighter enough to light up the night for several weeks or months. After that, the rate of lightning has increased a lot. The lightning ignites fires in the Great Rift Valley in East Africa, where humans ancestors are living. Forests are converted to grassland forcing inhabitants to walk from tree to tree. Scientists know there must have been a radiation events. From astronomical observations, astronomers can infer the average rate of supernova, gamma ray blasts, and solar blasts. From this rate, astronomers can infer the likelihood of such an event close enough and powerful enough to affect life on Earth. So we expect serious life draining events every couple of hundred million years or so on average. According to researchers, there had been mass extinctions and sudden changes in Earth's climate. Researchers also explained that a really nearby event of supernova explosion that is 30 light years away or closer would induce a mass extinction from a radiation destroying the ozone layer. Friends, astronomers explain, depending upon the type and energy of 2022 supernova, it could be as far as 3000 light years away. So this supernova cannot harm life on Earth, allowing lots of ultraviolet radiation through to damage life on the surface. It has probably happened a few times. But friends, how can astronomers detect such events happened nearby Earth? Researchers don't have enough any direct evidence. This data were collected from the ocean bottoms in a variety of locations around the world. The work was followed by others who reported data from remnants of fossilized bacteria from the moon, even from cosmic rays, all finally creating a consistent picture. Friends, that picture is based on detection of iron-60, an isotope. The dominant stable form of iron is iron-56, whose nucleus contains 26 protons and 30 neutrons. Iron-60 has 4 extra neutrons and it is radioactive and decays with a half-life of 2.6 million years. 
Friends, our planet is 4.5 billion years old, so no original Iron 60 should be left on Earth. Researchers can date the age of the event from the age of the sediments in which Iron 60 is found. And all recent publications agree that something happened 2.5 million to 2.6 million years ago at a distance between 150 and 300 light years away from Earth. Friends, there are also indications of another event 7 million or 8 million years ago, and it is also near enough to deposit Iron 60 on Earth. But how? In space, the iron would pass Earth as a part of the blast wave and be deposited for only a short time. But such events are spread out in time. One explanation suggests that the dust grains containing iron 60 were caught up in interstellar clouds, which confined them or modified their trajectory, keeping them in our neighborhood so they could fall to Earth more than once. Friends, another idea is that a lot of supernova occurred at various distances, as many as a dozen or more, and this concept would explain the extended deposits on Earth, considering the energetics needed to form the local bubble, in which our solar system and many other stars reside. Hey friends, tenuous gas or plasma is an electrically conducting medium in which there are roughly equal numbers of positively and negatively charged particles produced when the atoms in a gas become ionized and it is sometimes referred to as the fourth state of matter. This bubble is also a void in the interstellar medium where the density of hydrogen is only one tenth that of the rest of the Milky Way. What gas remains is hot and emits X-rays. Astronomers believe nearby supernova in the past 20 billion years created the bubble and excited its remaining gas. Friends, according to some astronomers, a chain of supernova explosion may have formed that bubble, perhaps the same ones that deposited the Iron 60. It may sound unreasonable to have so many supernova all going off in the same area at nearly the same time, but it is not. The massive stars that make type 2 supernova are often born in associations and therefore clump together. Friends, the Orion Nebula M42, a favorite of amateur astronomers, is a large example of this. The stars that make the powerful supernova have fairly short lives. So a group that is born together with the same starting mass will tend to explode more or less together. Astronomers estimate that the stars that dump the Iron 60 each contain about 10 times the mass of the Sun and should live only a relatively short 30 million years. This line of thinking demonstrates that the idea of a chain of explosion is reasonable but by no means proven.